As you might know, uh, recently I, I did a video uh, about Germany and the hostility toward Muslims there, which is very widespread according to an independent government report. And I discussed about that and invited people's comments, trying to understand better what's really going on in Germany. Now, obviously, I'm English. And um, the reason I mentioned that is that just yesterday, uh, two very uh, unfortunate articles were published in the uh, the Telegraph, the London Telegraph, and the uh, the Mail, both online, both huge readerships, millions and millions of people globally uh, read the Mail and read the Telegraph, both kind of right wing papers, I guess. And I wanted to share with you my, uh, frankly, my disgust and um, and just my shock and anger even at what I have read uh, in the comments to these articles. And I want to just share with you the news about uh, a mosque uh, that is being uh, built in London. And I just want to share with you uh, and respond, actually, to some of the comments. All of the comments are negative. I mean, this is what's shocking. This is why it's a good analogy with the German um, uh, um, video uh, about the widespread hostility towards Muslims, the Islamophobia, the bigotry, uh, the, the sheer prejudice, and, the, and even the racism as well, which is very, very widespread. So according to the Telegraph, this was yesterday, uh, mosque may be built in London's Trocadero Entertainment Complex. London-based billionaire entrepreneur as if as is plans to build a three-story Islamic center between uh, Soho and Piccadilly Circus. And then the article goes on talking about this guy and and you know the the, the backstory to this and how um, uh, is going to uh, this uh, house of prayer as it, it calls it is expected to have a capacity of three hundred and ninety worshippers. So not that big actually. Um, and a previous bids to build a mosque for bigger capacity uh, were shelved in 2020 following complaints from residents, allegedly, and a backlash from far-right groups. And then it goes on to quote um, uh, from the far-right group, uh, Britain uh, First, uh, as well. Now, this 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 mosque has been, I mean, I was aware of this story, actually. Uh, the, the, there have been struggles that some Muslims, see, there are a lot of Muslims, this is the story, there are a lot of Muslims, uh, working, not so much they live in the West End, not many people live in the West End, it, it's mainly uh, a place where you visit to shop and work, there are lots of offices, places of entertainment and so on, and there are a lot of Muslims there, I mean it's the heart of London in Westminster, it's actually the borough I live in, um, and you know Muslims are um, you know, supposed to pray five times a day, and uh, the mosque I go to, Good Street Mosque, just up the road from the West End there, and it's packed out. We need more space because Muslims pray to God, uh, you know, throughout the day. And so it's entirely natural and understandable that if there was somewhere in the West End, which there isn't, then the places we can go, we can just pop in there. We're out shopping or we're working, you know, during our lunch hour, we can pop into the mosque and just pray. You know, it just takes five, ten minutes. That's all All that this is about. That's all it's about. It's a house of prayer where we can just pray um, in a more convenient location. So that's the backstory. It's nothing sinister. Um, it's praying to the one God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and David and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. Now, you think, well, what's the big deal about this? Well, there is a big deal about it. Um, I won't go through the entire article uh, in the Telegraph and the Mail. You, I'll put the link to them. You can read for yourself. But it really, you know, it, it's a bit incendiary. And then you get to the comments. And I, I've honestly looked through these comments, uh, not all of them, but every one that I could see was negative, hostile. I just want to go through some of them and give my response because I, I'm appalled and disgusted by the ignorance and the bigotry and the Islamophobia and even the racism shown here. I mean, if it was reasonable, like a reasonable objection, I think, oh, well, fair enough. But it's not reasonable. This is based on awful uh, prejudice. So just it's almost at random here, um, going through the Telegraph's comments. Just this guy called Wigan Lancastrian says, this simply isn't appropriate. Uh, is cultural imperialism and a declaration of intent. Why on earth would you have a mosque in this location? And seven people have liked this. Uh, I mean, what? <laughs> you know, as I've already said, um, you know, there are a lot of Muslims who live and work in London and it's a place to pray. And it's not cultural imperialism. It's a it's a very sincere religious devotion. There's nothing sinister about it. So what's all this about um, imperialism? Rubbish. 
And then uh, the next comment, Andrew Doggart said, St. Paul's Cathedral, next. What do you mean St. Paul's Cathedral? No one's got their designs on St. Paul's Cathedral. Uh, that's a massive, who's complaining about that? No one, no Muslim is. Um, and then um, the next one, Michelle Page. I'm always reading them. Just This is an iconic building. This is the Trocadero, which it is, uh, and not really an appropriate location for a place of worship of any kind. Huh? The, the building is not being changed. The exterior remains exactly the same. Why isn't it an appropriate place for worship? Uh, I, I don't get that. And she says, um, I have my doubts that permission would have been granted to turn this into a Catholic church had it been sought. Um, you can parade your inclusive, inverted commas, and progressive principles without destroying historic buildings liked by some no one's destroying historic building it's a it's, a, it's a, a room within the building given over to worship of god there are catholic churches in the area um uh, for example in uh, in soho square the saint patrick's church um which is very popular and there are other churches so the catholic church by the way is declining in britain it's not likely to want to buy new buildings it's, it's islam that is growing and then um another one underneath that charles poirot what about women? They will need a separate hall to pray or will they be sent shopping Regent Street? Another ignorant comment. Of course, women can pray as well in, in mosques or they can pray at home. So they don't need a separate prayer hall. Um, another one. This is literally just reading them going down the list. I despair of this government. That's the name of the, <laughs> the commenter. Must be blocked at all costs my grandfather did not fight for this country in world war ii to be turned into a multi-race multicultural country to be dominated particularly by islam which is what islam is all about um it's time to stop selling this country off to foreign i mean this is a, a rant basically and then he says you know just to cap it all off this i despair of this government guy says mosques are simply a hideout for terrorists and money laundering also and 14 people have liked this this baloney i mean the guy's obviously never met a muslim never been to a mosque in his life how can one even begin D did his grandfather fight for a country where only christians can worship here so we'll get rid of all the jews of course as well and the hindus and and the atheists you know we must turn them into multi-race multicultural Britain has always been a multicultural society. We have Scotland, we have Wales, we have England, we have Northern Ireland, we have Irish, we have, you know, the 19th century and before. It's never been um, purely English. It's, it's, it's a, anyway, this is a awful prejudice. Uh, and again, I, I just, just to share it with you, you know, Muslims are simply, sorry, mosques are simply hideouts for terrorists. It shows you how stupid this person is. And then uh, Liam uh, Oliveira says, Again, I'm just just the next. I'm just reading them sequentially as you go down the list. I'm not cherry picking. I'm not cherry picking. You can see it for yourself. The next one says, "I would advise anyone in their twenties, with their full life ahead of them, to learn Polish, Hungarian, Spanish, or Portuguese, and prepare to migrate to Poland, Hungary, Argentina, or Brazil. Any of these places would be far more livable than England's last season of fifteen years' time." Again, sheer sheer prejudice. Stephen Robinson. The next comment. One word answer. Never. Well. It's going to happen. So um, let me, uh, now, now I'm going to skip through because uh, Peter Kane, a couple, uh, a couple of comments down, says um, this is a major step in what is termed a dawa. So he's heard this word dawa. So it's interesting. The taking of territory in the name of Islam. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. Well, that's I've never heard that definition of dawah before. It's not simply an innocent proposal for more prayer space. The authorities are completely ignorant of this. Peter Kane, honestly, and 14 people have liked this. This is like one of the highest uh, so far likes the complete baloney. I mean, Dawa is about sharing information about Islam. Uh, it's not about taking territory. And as I keep on saying, this is a much needed space in central London where um, Muslims uh, work and live and visit, shopping, work in shops, they work in offices, needing space simply to pray praying to the God of Abraham. That's all it is. I know this for myself. That's what we do. To say it's, um, you know, uh, taking territory of Islam is a Western trope uh, coming. It's, it's like the, the old fashioned myths 
uh, about Jews, for example, in medieval Europe who did unspeakable things. This is a kind of completely fictitious rubbish, basically, that one hears. And one despairs of, because how do you refute this guy? I mean, my way of refuting him was simply to shake his hand and say, dude, come with me to these places. Let me tell you about Islam. Let me show you these mosques. Uh, this is what Islam is really about. But would he take that invitation? Would he bother? Would he be willing to step outside of his mindset and learn new things, learn the truth? Um, there we go. So um, just going down more, uh, Max Million. God, I can't believe these are real names. This isn't protecting our cultural heritage. This building should be used to something in keeping with the original purpose. A mosque is completely out of character. Why is it completely? Why is worshipping the God of, of Abraham, the God of Jesus, the God of Moses and so on, peace be upon them all, out of character? This is sheer anti-Muslim bigotry. Is Muslims simply wanting quietly and a law abiding way to worship God? And this uh, Islam builds character, it helps to uh, it helps to uh, encourage orderliness and neighborliness and uh, and charity and being law abiding and being pious towards God and, and good values and so on and so on. This is very in keeping with the best of, uh, I would suggest, the best of uh, English uh, virtues or values, shall we say. Um, just going down. Here we go. Roy Gavin, another moderate Daily Telegraph reader. Time to either man the barricades or man the lifeboats. This proposal should not be allowed to progress. Central London is already like a souk. He's heard that word, souk, meaning obviously a, um, a kind of a market. Um, time to either mount. So this this kind of extremist rhetoric, you know. In, in other words, it take the barricades. In other words, to violate, to engage in violence, or man the lifeboats, presumably to leave the country. Well, <laughs> um, this proposal, which is a law-abiding proposal, simply to pray should not be allowed to progress. You see, the thing about English values, British values here, this is the joke in all of this, British values today, and folks are actually quite tolerant, uh, you know, compared to some other countries, even in Europe, like Germany, as we've seen, where people are allowed to, there is freedom of religion. And, you know, the freedom to pray together in a church or a synagogue or a, a mosque is protected by law. And it is a British value, actually. And for this man to... Uh, you know, take to the barricades. He's not being British. He is being an extremist from some other uh, some other universe, as far as I can see. Um, so, uh, just looking through the comments, more and more um, comments here. So, another one, Dean Glover, light by fire. I think they've given up enforcing the law where immigration is concerned. It's nothing to do with immigration. This is British citizens gathering to pray. Uh, uh, fairly privately, I mean, you know, it's within a building, casual walkers past in Piccadilly or Shaftesbury Avenue or uh, Leicester Square in that area are not going to be uh, seen, uh, not, not going to be able to see anything here at all. Um, oh, here we go. Josh Yearsley, we're a Christian country, he complains. Whilst many are no longer religious, that history informs and stabilizes culture. This is an affront and a quite outrageous idea. There is no room, he says, for Islam in a Western country. Josh Yearsley. His comment got 23 likes, which is the highest I've seen so far. Uh, so far. Well, actually, we have a country that believes in freedom of religion. That's a British value. Uh, Christianity, sadly, is in radical decline in the UK. I'm not happy about that. We need a strong counterforce to the militant secularism that's taking over, has taken over all our institutions. To say it's an outrageous idea that people should gather to pray in a law-abiding way is is just disgusting. Um, no room for Islam in a Western country. We've had Islam in Western countries for 1,300 years. Spain, the Iberian Peninsula, what we now call Spain and Portugal, was Islamic for hundreds and hundreds, seven, eight hundred 800 years. It was the most advanced part of Europe for centuries. And the, the, the technology and the science and the literature and the learning and the scholarship was passed on to non-Muslim Europe, which gave birth to the Renaissance, of course. And then you have Muslim country, Muslim majority white countries in Europe, like Bosnia and, and other places. So to say there's no room for Islam is sheer outrageous bigotry. Muslims and Islam has been part of European history and culture and the people of Europe for many, many centuries. 
uh, if only these people would read about our own history, which they don't. Do I carry on? Rob Horsford, another comment three hours ago. I sense this is very provocative, very dangerous. Lines are being crossed, he complains. It's very uncomfortable, really. Englishness is being pushed out by institutions and laws that give more rights to an invader than its indigenous people. So what rights are people, are Muslims being given to pray in a room in the West End that are being denied to non-Muslims? I mean, a serious question. That There are no rights that, that, that are being denied to non-Muslims. It's simply the same rights that Catholics have in that area to worship in Catholic churches, Anglos, Anglican churches, the St. Anne's in Soho, um, the very well-known um, uh, Church of England building there that's done a lot of work with the homeless over decades. I mentioned St. Patrick's in Soho Square, uh, the St. James in Piccadilly. Uh, these are places for worship. Um, the English people I can participate in, uh, anyone can participate in, Muslims have their own place. It's simply everyone having their, their, their right to worship uh, in the way that they see fit. To use this language of lines are being crossed uh, and talk about invasions and so on is, uh, is extremist rhetoric, a very uh, ignorant and nasty, and it makes me uh, ang angry, really. Uh, there's comments here about the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, which I won't mention. He always likes to get bashed. Um, so C. Oxford, uh, 22 likes. What are they praying for? If that was a genuine question, I'd actually answer this. But the worldview or dream of every devout Muslim is, wait for it, to be ruled by Sharia law. Liberal democracy does not factor into the equation. When we pray our five daily prayers, we're not thinking about Sharia law. We are worshiping God. Why? Because he is our creator. We submit to him alone. It's what we are made for. It's way we uh, express our, our createdness to our creator to in gratitude. We acknowledge his Rahman Rahim, his most compassionate, most merciful. Uh, you know, we pray the Surah Al Fatiha. It's nothing to do with being ruled by Sharia law. This is, again, a kind of alarmist uh, silliness, uh, really. Um, oh, just looking. I mean, I, I'm scrolling through here. Uh, I can't see a single. Uh, I mean, this is very sad. This one here, as is, sounds like a thoroughly despicable human being. This is the gentleman, the Muslim guy, businessman behind financing this, making it possible for Muslims to worship. Uh, Muslims who who uh, work and visit and shop the West End. And to call him, a, and, and that's 21 people like that uh, is, is appalling. Um, again, I'm looking through. Uh, I just can't. Oh, wait, there's another one. Freddie Sizer. It's not really an appropriate place for a place of prayer, he writes. The only reason uh, to put it there is to make a statement. What is that statement? It's like by 22 people. Well, what is an appropriate place for prayer? According to Islam, the whole world is an appropriate place uh, to pray. The only place you can't pray, I think, is the toilet. Um, so you're worshipping God. And the thing is, as Christianity continues its inexorable decline, sadly, in Europe, Islam, Muslims will find themselves through not wishing it, not engineering it. They will simply find themselves the only monotheistic presence left in Europe, bearing witness to the faith of Abraham, the faith that Jesus, of course, upheld and, and all the prophets of God. They will find themselves the only people left proclaiming the unity and oneness of God, the importance of worshipping him. Um, in truth and integrity, loving your neighbor, and, and all the wonderful um, uh, teachings of, of Islam, uh, which many of which are compatible with Judaism and Christianity too. So this is a very, very sad. Um, Anthony Peel says, no more mosques, please. <clears throat> well, anyway, uh, do I continue? Will it have a bar, says someone, silly. Um, so um, do I look, do I, if you're an Orthodox Christian, you won't get the Archbishop into, yeah. Okay, well, I, I'll, I'll leave it there. That's just um, about 90% of the uh, the comments that I've just see, literally looked through one by one by one. Um, let's have a quick look in the Daily Mail. Uh, there's only 46 comments uh, on the website. I suspect, yes, the comments below have been moderated in advance. I suspect uh, they have been censored. Um, but the top five comments below, um, so uh, one comment in on the Daily Mail 
uh, .co.uk says outrageous. That's the one word comment. And that has been liked by 11 and a half thousand people and disliked by 800 people. Another comment simply says these comments are much shorter than the, the telegraph. One. Another one says no, liked by 10,000 people. No, thanks. There's another one. Not a good move. Why? Buckingham Palace would be next. Another one says dreadful news. Uh, in fact, every single comment is hostile and rejecting. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I, there's no point in even reading them all out. They're all negative. And this is <clears throat> this is very, very sad indeed. And I'm ashamed that so many people have these uh, views. If only they were to get to know their Muslim neighbors, understand Islam, uh, understand the true teachings of, of this incredible faith um, with this great emphasis on worshiping God and giving in charity and good neighborliness and the, the virtues of a wholesome family life based on traditional family values um, and against exploitation that we see through gambling and through um, you know, about going a long, long list of incredible things that Islam teaches, which are a great benefit to mankind. Uh, but none of this is acknowledged because of the incredible blindness and insistence on ignorance and not actually understanding the truth. We've been forced to do it in the West uh, with, with Judaism because of the terrible events uh, during uh, the Second World War. And before that, we've had to confront some of the extremely bizarre views we used to hold about Jews, you know, about, well, they can go there, they're so awful. Um, but, um, but the West is still acceptable to express deep prejudice and hostility, hostility towards Muslims. This is still the socially acceptable prejudice. We've seen this, uh, it seems, in Germany. It's alive and kicking uh, and screaming in uh, London. Um, so that's my rant. Uh, I'm generally appalled that all the comments, all of them, in both of these major, are all entirely negative, um, and we have a lot of work to do. Um, people would not be saying this, I think, if these were synagogues or, or anything else. It's just uh, focused on, on Muslims uh, for the reasons we mentioned. Islamophobia, historic civilizational prejudice uh, with a big dose of racism, and just sheer blockheaded ignorance, uh, which humanity, unfortunately, is very good at occasionally, and not just English people. A lot of people have that problem too. Anyway, that's the end of my uh, rant. Uh, if you've endured this much, thank you for letting me get this off my chest. Till next time.